president announced to you today, uh, here standing alongside President Trump, that we will do everything within our power to ensure that we do have free and fair elections in this country. If we don't have that in a constitutional republic, we have nothing. It's the basis of who we are as a nation, and we owe that to the American people. And so what we're going to do is introduce legislation to require that every single person who registers to vote in a federal election must prove that they're an American citizen first. They have to prove it. That will be a new uh, uh, part of the federal law and a very important one. What good is it to tell House Republicans to kill the GOP-led border bill if you don't then follow through on the goal everyone predicted of Trump trying to campaign off of it? And since Speaker Johnson helped on the legislative side, he may as well help on the dishonest campaign trail too. Republicans are introducing a bill that will require proof of citizenship to vote. It, it seems like common sense. I'm sure all of us would agree we only want U.S. citizens to vote in U.S. elections. But there are some Democrats who don't want to do that. Uh, we believe that one of their designs, one of the reasons for this open border, which everybody asks all around the country, why would they do this? Why would they allow all this chaos? Why the violence? Because they want to turn these people into voters. Right now, the administration is encouraging illegals to go to their local welfare office to sign up for benefits. Well, guess what? When you go to a, a welfare office, they also ask you if you would like to register to vote. And so many people, we think, are going to do that. We believe they want an open border to turn these people into voters. Many people that enter the country, we think, are going to go to welfare offices and register to vote. There's nothing behind these declarations of rampant voter fraud and non-citizens voting except their opinion that it exists. And when Donald Trump is scowling behind in the shadows, for some reason, his people believe that the lies are for real. It's actually insulting to their voters because these guys rightfully assume that there's about a 2% chance that MAGA will even be curious enough to find that truth. This, this press conference was built as an election integrity press conference. Uh, and, and what the speaker got wrong was the law that was passed, the motor, voter, the motor voter law was passed in 1993. In 1996, the Congress passed the Illegal Immigration Reform and Immigration Responsibility Act. Mm -hmm. That act makes it explicitly illegal mm -hmm. for non-citizens to vote. According to the Heritage Foundation's database on voter fraud, for non-citizens, there's been fewer than 50 cases of non-citizens voting in elections since 2002. Mm -hmm. So the idea that there's this mass voter fraud happening where illegals are running oh, to the polls and voting in mass numbers. There's zero oh, evidence. Yeah. Not only but you is know, the heritage... You, you know, not only, County, hold on, you wait a second. I'm not interrupting anybody. You know that, right? But not only is this... Now, not only is the Heritage Foundation said this, the Bipartisan Policy Center has said this, the Brennan Center for Justice has said this, the FBI has said this over and over and over yeah, again. Yeah. People Brennan keep Center. saying that there's voter fraud <laughs> and there's no evidence of voter fraud. There's no evidence of non-citizens voting in federal elections. Richard Fowler out there breaking hearts and minds on Fox News with that breakdown of reality where a Trump-like propaganda usually runs freely. Here's more of the consequences that already exist where Donald Trump and Mike Johnson are claiming to champion some solutions to this make-believe problem. The speaker is jumping on a bandwagon here with a very wobbly wheel. That's what we know. The simple truth is that they're, they're talking about something that doesn't exist. We do not have a problem in this country of people who are here illegally voting, not at any measurable level. If you want to register to vote, you have to show a driver's license. You have to have a social security number. They do check that information against other databases. And you have to affirm that you are a U.S. citizen under very stringent penalties if you're caught, including jail time, deportation, fines. Prominent Republicans should know that there are laws against illegal activities surrounding elections. Just ask Dinesh D'Souza, who was sentenced to five years probation for illegal contributions in the name of other people to his preferred candidate. Or maybe top Georgia Republican Party official Brian Pritchard, who voted illegally nine times and registered to vote while defying his probation in connection to some felonies that have been on his back for years. Maybe they should consult with Kim Taylor, who was sentenced to four months in prison after she was convicted on 52 counts of fraudulent voting and providing false information in registering and voting. I mean, she only filled out voter registrations and absentee ballots for members of the Vietnamese community under the guise of offering translation help. They know that their position is based on lies, but they're betting on the fact that their audience simply doesn't care about truth and honesty as much as the good Christian Mike Johnson doesn't care about truth or honesty. And, you know, the allegations about these, these voting machines, some of them being rigged with this software by Dominion, look, there's a lot of merit to that. And when the president says the election is rigged, that's what he's talking about, that it was the fix was in. You know, I could give example after example in all these states. I don't know how much time you all have this morning, but there's some, some 
some of these lawsuits have a lot of merit. In every election in American history, there's some small element of fraud, irregularity, error. We, we just know that. You just accept that that's the case. But when you have it on a broad scale, when you have you know a software system that is used all around the country that is suspect because it came from Hugo Chavez's Venezuela, and that's why the president is so frustrated, and that's why so many, so many, 71, 73 million Americans around the country uh, feel like that the election was stolen from them.